back here. So Ray will, will you please read the objectives for Ray's speech, please. Thank you very much, Madam Toastmaster. <laughs> the objectives of the speech this evening are, first, to persuade listeners to adopt your viewpoint or ideas or to take some action. Next, appeal to the audience's interest. Then, next, use logic and emotion to support your position. And finally, avoid using notes. The time for the timer, five to seven minutes. Thank you. Now, I will reintroduce Rick. His speed is Whiskey Zulu Delta, clear for takeoff, and it's part two of a speed. Please help me welcome Rick Hall. My dad and I were going flying that day. I was excited. I'm always excited to go flying. We go, we have breakfast, we go get in the car. I'm driving to the airport. Since it was spring, I mean, the grass is starting to grow. You see little bits of green. The leaves, the buds are starting to come out. The tulips, which are especially prevalent in Thunder Bay, are coming up in the flower gardens everywhere. As we drive to the airport, I'm just I'm a 13-year-old kid, and I'm bubbling with anticipation. <laughs> At the airport, we go to the flying club. That's, my, that's where my dad was a member, and my dad's a private pilot. Today, we're going to go flying in a little che Cherokee 140. We get out to the front lines. Walk out to the aircraft. Tail numbers WZD, Whiskey Zulu Delta. Do our walk around. My dad, he's the pilot in command. So he climbs in the aircraft, sits in the left hand seat. I'm the passenger. I sit in the right hand seat. Crank up the engine and start moving out to the taxi. Then it's time for the pilot in command to call the tower for clearance. But that's not who picked up the microphone. I picked it up. And I called the tower for clearance. Thunder Bay Tower, Whiskey Zilla Delta, taxi instructions. We get our clearance and start taxiing out to the active runway. I'm proud of myself. I got to use the radio. <laughs> To set the real framework here of where, where the time was and the place was, it was 30 years ago, 35 years ago. Things are quieter. We used to walk down the taxi way to go for lunch to the restaurant at the terminal. I don't think anyone's doing that at the auto airport. Mm. The most exciting thing that ever happened there is when the DC-9 would land. Supper time. <coughs> and as we're taxiing by the by the terminal, we come up to this part where the where the planes run up. We stop, we run up our engine to make sure everything's okay. Then we pick up the microphone to request clearance to to take off. Thunder Bay Tower, Whiskey Zilla Delta, clear to take off. Instructions for taking. As I said before, it really is amazing that that little 13 year old kid ran the radio. But three weeks before, you'd find a 13 year old boy with a stuttering problem that was so debilitating, getting out two words in a row. 
without stuttering was something just so insurmountable. It was hard to even imagine, let alone putting a sentence together. My father knew this. And he came up to me one day and he says, Rick, how would you like to work the radio on the aircraft? It's like a kid getting candy. Sitting there bubbling and says, But then I realized it's not safe. I was only 13 year old, but I knew what safe was. And I said that to my dad, I said, I can't do that. That's just unsafe, because I stuttered too much. And my father replied, well, I suppose you're going to have to work through that one, aren't you? 13-year-old mm -hmm. kids can be pretty resourceful. I worked for three weeks trying to get that down pat. I practiced every day after school. I practiced all the verbiage. I wasn't a perfect speaker after that, but I got the words down pat so I could talk on the radio. Imagine it. In a controlled airspace, a little 13-year-old kid talking on the radio. But that's what happened. <clears throat> when I did this speech the very first time, it came to me that no kid could be motivated. Why can't I? The very next day, I called my doctor and says, I need help. You all knew me. I was hugely overweight. I needed a change, and I made a decision. Change will happen. That's it. The future starts here. anyone else in this room ever had a time when they had to make a uh, decision to change? Everyone. I bet you, Harold, when you were getting ready to retire, you had to change the idea of working to retirement. I saw you in there trying to wrestle with that decision in your work as a consultant. Bill, I'm sure when you quit being a teacher, what am I going to do after that? I have interest, <clears throat> but what am I going to do? And you made a decision. I want change. I'm going to move on. Jerry, I bet you when you went to school and you're coming up for your final exams to be an accountant, you're young and you're probably partying a little bit. But you had to, <laughs> but you had to make a decision. Mm -hmm. i got to get through that exam and put my parents' good money to work. <laughs> Whiskey Zilla Delta, Thunder Bay Tower, clear for takeoff. Are you ready for takeoff? How about you? Are you ready? Are you ready, Jerry? Ready. Of course you were. You've been cleared. <laughs> <laughs> It's amazing what you can do if you're motivated for change. I bet you everyone in here would just love some point in time to be cleared for takeoff, to make that change, to take something so profound that you want to change in your life and just make it happen, make a decision, move forward. Everyone has that in them. Everyone can make that change. Fellow Postmasters.